the Apple Vision Pro. Here it is. I understand that this spatial computing device could be the beginning of the end. I still want it. You're gonna be set up for success after this because it's so simple, it's so intuitive, and it really is amazing. And I understand the dystopian aspects of it. It's made me feel really strange now in the real world because when I'm looking at something, it's hard for my brain to comprehend that I can't look at it, pinch, and bring it closer to myself. The other ones, I didn't really want them. The Oculus, the, the Metaverse thing, I don't even, the PSVR, I'm sorry y'all, I did not want them. I mean, they were kind of cool at the time, but I didn't really want them. This. And it will slowly dial your environment more and more into your field of view until you dial it all the way up to fully surrounding you. So I tried to watch the Marquise Brownlee unboxing video, but this man is moving so slow. Man, it's like a shoebox. Like, this dude really thinks that this is an ASMR video. It smells pretty new. <laughs> Bruh, open the package. Is he whispering? Why are you whispering? Take this protective off the first time. Dang. There's your glass. So I don't really watch unboxing videos, so it turns out you don't even use the thing in unboxing videos. It's literally just unboxing it. So then I had to wait for him to come out with a video of him actually using it after having it for a week. All right, so you've seen the unboxing. Now it's time for the breakdown. Tons of YouTubers and people have gotten their hands on it in the past couple of months, but it was like at a controlled Apple facility. I'm pretty sure they ended up building the facility physically just to promote this thing. Okay, here we go. Going in now to see the Vision Pro. No photos, no video? No. So I have good news and bad news. And it was wild. It felt like Apple stuck a giant Apple Watch to my head, in a good way. The sock-like headband was easy to put on and adjust the size with the knob. Oh look, Tim Cook showed up, not wearing the headset. They didn't get to bring in their cameras, but a lot of them described it as being the closest thing to real magic. My main question is, how do you type on this mother lover? Oh, I'm gonna write back. The keyboard pops up and I can put this wherever I want. Now the typing on here is so wild because it, it kind of feels like I'm actually typing. Okay, so there are apparently three different types of ways to type, the, the physical, typer like that. I'm a really fast typer in real life. I can't see myself getting used to this type. To literally hunt and peck, poking the keys on the keyboard that appears in the air in front of you. <laughs> so this one is tough because it literally only reacts to your pointer finger on each hand. Then there's of course, you know, the, the boomer way using the, uh, the mic, which is awesome. The last way to do it is literally to just look up at the microphone and say the URL out loud, mkbhd.com. And then it just hears you and goes to the site pretty quick. And then apparently you can look at and tap with your finger uh, exactly which key. I know that young people are gonna get really good at that and that's gonna be weird. To literally hunt and peck, poking the keys on the keyboard that appears in the air in front of you. <laughs> so this one is tough because it literally only reacts to your pointer finger on each hand. A couple of months ago when Apple first announced it was coming out with a spatial computing device, I thought this type of technology was at least 10 years away. Not like six months. Nine, like, <laughs> I mean, I feel like this is like a nine out of 10, like of how we actually look. It's pretty like, good. And also like skin tones too, because we all three yeah. of us have very different complexions too. And I feel like it actually, I think he did a pretty good job. Every I think when this came out, Casey Neistat tweeted something along the lines of, he was naive for thinking this thing was gonna be $2,000. Yes, it's $3,400. The first version, the new version. But let's be honest, they're probably gonna come out with a Apple Vision, not pro, slim, and it's gonna be like $500 cheaper. But for those of us who are into technology and want Star Trek to be real, we're gonna, we're gonna sell our soul for this. So I highly suggest you watch this podcast by the guy who created the Oculus and ended up selling it to Mark Zuckerberg in 2014 for $2 billion. So he has an incredibly unique opinion on this. What up, what do you think? Hey, did they nail it? I think that there's things that I would do differently if I were Apple, but- uh, What if, did they do right? <laughs> and I, that's, that's what I was gonna say. They did basically everything everything right they didn't do anything anything any anything terrible i mean obviously more than anyone but one of the things that i think that was most important he said is that 
Apple choosing to sell it for so much money and making it a device for the luxury, uh, the device for the rich is going to make, uh, you know, working class people feel like it's something that they really want. When 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 Apple when Apple when Apple launched the the Vision Pro, I, I retweeted a tweet of my own from 2015 where I said that before VR can become something that everyone affo can afford, it must become something that everybody wants. Mm. And I think that's the approach Apple is taking. Because if you think about it, most people's Oculus or, or other uh, VR device, and they're saying it's not a VR device, their, their kid's little D VR device, device is just hit, sitting around in the living room on the couch somewhere. This, I highly doubt. But because I have my digital persona already added on here, my eyeballs will show up when I'm paying attention or talking to someone else. And he, another great thing that he, uh, yeah, I highly doubt people are going to just be leaving this thing around and be like, oh yeah, my kid just plays with it. No, that thing is on a shelf. Another thing that he says in this uh, podcast, I think that was really important was the fact that most people who sell these type of devices want to attach a battery pack to it, but they know it doesn't look as cool. The fact that Apple came out with one and they have a battery pack on theirs and they're making the luxurious one look cool like that will definitely change the way that these devices are made in the future battery pack like if apple made one of these just to like charge my phone i'd buy two i'm pretty sure in the announcement clip you could audibly hear people's reaction to how much it costs apple vision pro starts at 34 oh. million it will be available early next year on apple.com it's finally here, folks. The technological singularity is upon us. It already has happened right in front of us. Oh, that approach will change. Obviously, they're going to do a cheaper version in the future. It, it, it boils my mind when you have all of these pundits coming out and saying, this is a blunder. It'll never go anywhere. Who the heck is going to spend $3,500? A yeah, lot of, of people. <laughs> yeah, well, that, and that, that's the real secret. There's a lot of people who are going to yeah. spend it. But, but the crazy thing to me is that this thing doesn't even really have apps yet. So for those of you who weren't there back in 2007 when the iPhone came out, what made it so cool was the apps that eventually came with it. So for the Apple Vision Pro, they've already previously made it available for developers to know what they're going to be capable of doing with it. But what's going to really make or break this device is an app. And I'm not even talking like a usable app, even a game. Another video I highly suggest you watch is the designer of the game Fruit Ninja. Yes, I designed the original Fruit Ninja. I spent the last couple of weeks finding decade-old photos, old presentations, and blurry 360p footage from old YouTube to try and tell the story as well as possible. Who worked for an Australian video games company back in the day, and that was one of many games they were, came, they were trying to create. But the fact that that game, that app, was developed in such a way that was so intuitive with the iPhone, uh, is what made it success. So if anybody who watches me, I've been trying to start a video game company, even though I don't play video games. If anybody who watches me knows how to develop apps, come to me. We need to make an app for this. My other question with this thing is, can you walk around with it on? And this mother lover is playing ping pong with it. Through a headset. Also, the pass through is so close to real time that I could legitimately interact with all kinds of things. I could catch items flying at me. I even tried playing ping pong it was easy, no hesitation. So officially the R1 chip is doing all the processing of all this stuff and adjusting the shutter speed for different lighting conditions and always keeping pass-through latency under 12 milliseconds. So I guess you can. I like how the video that Apple came out with on their channel is made specifically to make fun of me, William, who doesn't have this thing yet. But today you'll see it through the eyes of someone who's never tried it before. Like Will, let's get started. I'm excited. So yeah, if you guys want to see me make content with this, find me on Venmo, and uh, yeah, I can get it. Thank you.